Okay, hi. I'm trying to find this. This is my new system post child breaking my laptop in the middle of a pandemic. Um, so hopefully this camera situation I have is working for you all. And I will try not to look at the wrong device as much as possible. Today I'm going to talk about low back, another fan favorite question. Um, first I want to talk about a really basic but not so widely known thing, I think, outside of, you know, trained body work communities. When people say, oh, my low back is so tight, they say, oh, I should really just be stretching and, oh, I'm just hangover. That is not where a lot of us want to start. I think if you know the subtleties of your low back and your hamstring tension, that can be a place to start. But when you hang over, if you look where I am here, a lot of what's happening really is I'm stretching my hamstrings, which is amazing and wonderful and I love it. Um, but I am not really working out anything in my low back and it's really easy for me not to correct any of my low back alignment issues when I'm in that position. So I want to start from a different place. Um, I want us to go a little more basic. And the first thing we're going to do I'm going to get a little closer to you and you won't be able to see my face, but we're going to find some points here. So just hold your hands right above your hips, not on, but right above. So you feel like you could almost press down on them a little bit. And if you feel like taking some time to do it, go ahead and sandwich your thumbs and fingers around above your hips, kind of right in between your ribs and hips. And then think about your head going up to the ceiling while you place just like a pound or two of pressure down onto the hips. Try not to be arching. Try to find a place where you're just finding your natural curves in your spine, whatever yours may be. And just a little, little really mild traction. And you can take that for a while. And now we're going to find, so here's my hip bone and I'm moving up and around. So I'm not at my spine, but I'm a little more in than when you usually say hands on your hips. I'm still on that bone, but I'm kind of in between where I would say we think of, I'm on my hip and I'm on my spine. I'm a little in between there, maybe a third of the way in. And I'm going to find that place on either side. And I'm just going to massage little circles. I'm not moving. I'm holding one point. You'll feel kind of a wall of muscle tissue if you press in from the side. This is your erector spini and also your quadratus lumborum area. And we're going to really be working with the quadratus lumborum here. So I'm finding that and I'm going to push in and then if you push down, you should feel hip bone. So in should feel like wall of back muscle. Not so much a tender, I'm going to be touching my organ ceiling, but a wall of back muscle. And then hip bone. So in that spot right where the bone and the wall of back muscle meet. I'm just going to do some circles and then I'm just going to give a little pressure and you can do thumbs or you can do a knuckle. It's a great way to keep an alignment because thumbs can get tender for people. So let's take knuckles for now if your arms reach there. Just the pressure alone should feel wonderful. And then what we're going to do is just do a little side to side bend of the knees slowly letting our sacrum and the SI joints on each side move and open a little. And this should really give you kind of a, ooh, almost, I get like a, not lightheaded, but I feel my body kind of relax in that lightheaded way a little. And they can be small movements, but you can do this really for as long as you like. It's a very delightful feeling. And then you're going to kind of come back to center, slowly release, feel where you are. And then I'm going to try to set up this camera so we can move to the floor. And let's see how it goes. Mm -hmm. We're going to do our best here. You might see a little bit of an edge of a children's book. That's going to be just part of our amazing setup today. Stuffed cat. I think I might have something. Okay. This is our fort. It's now part of my backdrop. So I'm going to go to hands and knees and we're going to talk about cat cow. 
So a lot of us know cat and cow. It's an amazing way to start warming up your lower back. Make sure your hands are under your shoulders, knees are under your hips. And you can do a traditional cat cow. I don't think it has to be huge. But you can start traditional. Also, if you are pregnant or just postpartum, one thing I love to do is to keep everything except my lumbar lower spine in a neutral position and just do the cat cow from my tailbone, keeping my head here. And that really enables you to keep knitting these transverse abdominus muscles while you do it and not sink too far into that belly. It's a beautiful feeling. It also might feel amazing. When I was pregnant, I also loved a full cat cow. So no, no shame either way. But it might also, I still sometimes prefer that half cat cow with just the low back, which is what I just switched to right now. So those are two options. We can do a few of those. Then we're gonna go through our side and come down to the ground. Now, I'm gonna start with a really simple one knee in, one leg long. Um, this probably is gonna feel really basic, but there's nothing like it. It's really great. And I am not going as far as I can in. I'm trying to keep my hips in an alignment keep my sacrum and my butt feeling the ground. And then it almost feels, you, you will feel a limitation that you don't feel if you let everything go. Feel that limitation, that limitation is fine. And I'm gonna hold here for 30 seconds, I'm just holding the knee and really trying to keep everything else open and chill. If you can't go this far, there's always the option to hold the thigh. You could get a strap or a belt Hold where you need to hold, but just don't let yourself hike up because we're trying to bring some evenness into the back. I'm going to do 30 seconds on the other side, and then I'm going to switch to a very light twist. My leg's going to come across. Now, I'm going to go with it to start with because I want this to be light. So I'm going to go over to my side. I've got my foot hooked, my knee down, and now depending on where you feel comfortable and not strained, again, keeping the hip pretty open here, not crunching up too much. You're just gonna open your shoulder and maybe for you that's here. This is a great twist. It might be here, it might be all the way over, but you'll notice for me here, I'm bringing the leg back with me. So it's not a deeper twist per se, it's about what feels good in your body. Right now for me, that's kind of here and I'm putting my hand here so that I'm not just feeling totally flailed open. This gives me a little bit of a feeling of support in the shoulder but this is also great. 30 seconds here, and then same thing. Gonna switch to the other side, find my comfortable position. 30 seconds here. You could do that twice over, I often do. And then the second time might be a little bit of a deeper feeling. And then you're gonna come back to the middle, feel the pelvis on the ground, feel the sacrum on the ground, take both knees in. And it's, again, I'm not curling up, I'm really letting my back feel extension as much as possible. And I'm just pulling my knees in lightly. Again, you can be here, you can have something to hold on to, all of that works. And this is another 30 seconds. I like it like this because then my shoulders can really relax, but it really depends on what feels comfortable in your arms and your shoulders and the rest of your body. After this, I'm gonna roll to my side I might come back through and just feel how my cat cow went and how it changed. Feels a lot more open for me even just doing a few seconds, but definitely do the whole thing. Uh, and then I'm just gonna slowly come up in whatever way feels comfortable. And I'm gonna shift my camera again so we can stand up together for a minute. So from here, one thing, you can't quite see me, hang in there. You can do is now check out, you can do some of that massage again if you want and see how it feels different to move the sacrum. But now check out your forward fold and see how it might be a little different from usual. Allow yourself to bend your knees because that can take the hamstring stretch out of the equation and really let you get into the low back more. It doesn't mean it's a lesser stretch, it's just a different 
way of working with the body. It's different muscles you're targeting. So I'm just going to take a nice gentle roll down. I'm going to bend my knees. I'm going to let my back drape. And for me, this is a pretty significant bend for me. Without any stress in my knees, of course. And if you want, you can play around. Test what I'm talking about here. Try to straighten. You will feel your hamstrings so much more. Bend your knees and you will really feel that low back getting an opening. And you can roll up. Don't hold your head up like I was. I was thinking of you and talking to you, but let that head go. Um, so those are some basic things. And now we're going to do an assist with foam roller. It's crazy camera days. All right. This, I'm not, I am not going to share rolling out your back because I think that's something that requires a lot of knowledge of how things are working and some training with somebody a lot of time. It's not a great thing to just learn online, just to roll up and down the spine. I think too much can go wrong with that. If you are comfortable with it, by all means do it. But what I'm going to talk about is just light traction again. It's kind of the name of the game these days. So we're going to find our hip points, the little bony part sticking out, your ASIS, if that's a familiar term to you. We're gonna bring that into contact with our foam roller. And this might not be the place for you. The places are gonna vary. For me, it's a great place right now. I'm just laying over. I can turn my head to one side, or I can make a pillow with my hands. And I'm just letting everything open up and relax. Now you can move a little bit up if that feels like if your tension is slightly higher up in the low back, then you can do that. And have it be a place where you are not feeling, you might feel discomfort, that pleasant discomfort of a release, but not pain in an organ way or pain that something is being compressed that shouldn't be compressed. You might feel it on the bone depending on how your body is structured, but it should feel good. It should give you opening throughout the glutes um, and opening in the sacrum, which is a really great thing to have right now because we're all very, very contained and probably very twisted into these strange positions we assume we're at our home when we're not out and about. Um, so that's my last trick for you all today. Now, I do want to talk about one more thing I'm going to talk about constructive rest, which is a part of every treatment as far as I'm concerned. Um, but this is the time where I think it's really key. So I'm going to get my handy dandy chair. And I have a yoga strap at home. You don't have to have a yoga strap. Um, a necktie works great, a belt. I would say something that's not too elastic. So, you know, a scarf. Scarves are great. Everybody has something. Um, but like your TheraBand, you would really have to get so tight to make this work because what this is going to do is hold my legs in place. So constructive rest in and of itself. I'm going to lay down through my side again. I'm bringing my legs up onto this chair. I'm going to be in a little less, a little more than a 90 degree angle. And I am trying to find a place where the natural curve of my low back is present, but I'm not arching. The natural curve in the neck is present, but I'm not letting my chin jut up. I'm letting the rib cage relax in, not poke out, but I'm also not forcing anything to the ground. It's restful and it's constructive. Um, and then this for me, you know, my body likes to fly open. So I take this, I loop it around my thighs, and then I tighten it. It's in a bit of a funky little twist right now, but we're working well. <laughs> I tighten it to a place where the strap is doing the work of holding my legs up so I don't need muscular tension for it. So here, I'm not holding my legs in. I'm letting them totally fall as open as they would, except the strap is saying, no, you need to align in a parallel position right now. I highly recommend spending at least 10 minutes in this position. I know that's not always easy for everyone, but it, it, feel, it makes such a difference. It's so lovely. 
um, hands on the belly I find to be the most comforting. It also helps me feel my breath. And sometimes it's nice to feel a little extra extension, letting the chin really find actual alignment here, because we're usually a little bit tipped here. Finding that neck alignment, you will feel the difference in the sacrum if you can kind of lengthen the neck just a little bit. So you're going to stay there as long as it's comfortable. And then when you're ready, you can unloop your strap if you have it. Or if not, don't. Bring your leg down, come to your side, and come up. And that is constructive rest, and that is one of my most favorite things to do when things feel out of whack anywhere in the spine or the hips, even the shoulders. Add it into any routine you're doing with me or someone else, and it will be worth it. Um, thank you for sitting through this somewhat chaotic video with me. I don't know if and when my laptop will be fixed in our current situation, but I'm going to try to work on this and get better and better. Um, thank you for entertaining my new children's toy backdrop. There's a whole tea party happening in there that my kids left, but we won't get into that right now. But um, yeah, just thanks for being here with me in my space and letting me show up the way I am and showing up the way you are. And I hope that you are all safe and well and cared for. Um, know that I am here if you're in need of anything. And I wish you all the best. Thank you.